Western Teacher Live, talking about public education, unionism and much more. Hello, welcome to a special series of Western Teacher Live, the State School Teachers Union of Western Australia's podcast. This series looks in detail at the agreement in principle regarding the school's general agreement 2020. Three. With SSTUWA President Matt Jarman, we'll be going through the negotiations thus far, how voting works, when you can vote, what the potential consequences are of a yes or no vote, and of course details of what is included in the third offer that persuaded Executive to recommend acceptance of what is now termed an agreement in principle. You can also find all of this information online. Go to sstuwa.org.au. When you sign in, and you must sign in, a large pop-up window will appear. Click on Click Here for more info, and you will be taken to all the information on the agreement in principle. Now, that's if you're a member. You will be able to see the detail of the agreement without signing in if you're a non-member, but, of course, you won't be able to vote. Uh, You can find out where and when the next information sessions are, either online or via Zoom or in person at a venue near you. You can also find a voter info, info pack, summary posters, a comparison between the claim and offers, a full voter info pack, a shorter at-a-glance guide, full details of the proposed district allowances, scenarios for seven different levels, from graduate teacher to principal, full salary tables for every role, detailed background information on on several of the offer components, and of course details on the voting process and what that yes or no vote might mean. So don't take your info from social media, from your well-informed chum who might not even be a member of the union. Do go and find out uh, for yourself. These podcasts can all be listened to in isolation, but we recommend trying to listen to them all, if, if you can, to get the full picture. Matt, let's talk then about uh, salaries, levels and allowances. Um, Obviously, whenever a pay negotiation is going on, the only thing that the media in particular talks about is salaries. It's one of of over 90 um, claims within this uh, agreement, of course, but people are are, are keen. They want to maximise their income and, most importantly of all, they would like to get ahead of the, the cost of living. And, of course, the history of this is that there was a $1,000 cap imposed on public sector pay by the McGowan government when it first came in. Um, It was a budget um, uh, reduction or deficit reduction process, and and public servants were were the easiest uh, weapon to use. That $1,000 cap was eventually given the boot two years early, but was in for four years. Uh, Given the boot, thanks to member action, from the SSTUWA alongside its public sector alliance colleagues. Then there were more fixed increases, which were a significant jump from $1,000, but unfortunately then came along at a time when inflation was rampant and cost of living rises. So that's left teachers um, in a a bit of a pickle in terms of uh, the, the cost of living. Now, after many years, the Cook government restored proper bargaining. So there was no bargaining going on for the last couple of agreements. It was, this is what you're getting. There's no conversation here, particularly on salaries. So how does this um, agreement, given that the the union or the public sector alliance ask was for 12% over two years, what is the offer on the table? Uh, The offer, as put to members at the moment, is for 5% in the first year, 4% and uh, 3% in the out year. Uh, all of the economic information that we were receiving from both the state government as well as independently sourced and reported to the executive has been reporting, and even we've seen it recently, Bob, in the state and federal budget um, outlooks, is that economic conditions are going to start, they're cautiously predicting so, but are going to start to slowly improve. With regards to the point of CPI, uh, the 5, 4 and 3 puts us in front of where CPI is expected to be. Now, one of the um, often uh, stated pieces of or feedback from members is, but we're not making up for uh, what happened a couple of years ago with the 8% inflation rate and those kinds of things. I would not say that it's never happened, but I would say it's very rare for a pay offer to come 
come in and recognise past economic factors and try to rectify that. Most uh, that I can certainly remember pay offers have just looked at the economic conditions of the day and had a look at what are those going forward for that cycle of the EBA. And this one certainly has us in front of the um, state and federal government's predicted CPI for WA, which is a little bit different to the to the nationals, um, in, in that it'll be across the three years 2.5% better than where CPI is bet. 1% for the first year, 1% for the second year, and 05 for the third. The salary component is significant for as a consideration for members, of course it is, because the cost of living pressures, particularly for those people in rental accommodations in that market and also with the other costs, uh, particularly attributed to food and, and fuel, which is to almost everybody, of course, is something that is hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel for. Those costs are impacting all of us on a fortnightly basis. So salary is very significant, but looking forward for a five, four and three, it does have us, by comparison to forecasts, in a better position. I suppose what some people do is they sit back, but you, you wanted seven. And you've only got five. There, there's sometimes no understanding that the initial claim, which is a public sector alliance uh, joint claim, is set at a point which, you, let's be honest, you're not expecting to get that. Sometimes getting half of it would be seen as a victory. So, so do you think this is a reasonable offer salary-wise, given the, the reality of bargaining? I mean, obviously you'd like to get seven or eight or nine, but, but in, in the real world, is this a reasonable salary offer? Prior to the uh, prior to the wage, yes, in short, prior to the wages policy being uh, announced uh, late December last year, across the public sector alliance, we thought we would be lucky to get three percent in the first year. So we started to discuss internally across the alliance what our media response might be. Should it be? zero to three and what it would be if it would be three and four and we didn't bother going above four and a half percent really because we just didn't see that coming. The first offer for the first year was 4.75 percent which told us across the alliance that the government is well aware that it was not going to get away with a very skinny salary component. So lifting them to 12 percent um, in our uh, in our component, we have one other union who has settled their agreement in principle through their membership, and, and a, quite a significant yes received uh, five, four, and three and a half. But that particular union has no conditions attached to them. They have one new salary increment level, which is I believe for 110 of their officers. We also have a salary increment. We actually have a couple. Uh, when you take into consideration some of the issues we've got for some, for some of our school leaders in this third offer. But that main salary increment uh, offer for senior teachers will impact 9,500 people. So by far our salary and our conditions is very, very expensive and very significant. And it's uh, part of what the new wages policy position is from this state government. And uh, in addition to the flat sort of salary rates that, that, that go across the years, so 5 4 and 3% respectively, um, there have also been some significant offers made around allowances and around specific levels um, for, let's say, senior teacher, for example, level 3 classroom teachers and level 3 principals. Take us through some of those, starting with the uh, grad allowance. Yeah, well, our graduates are currently sitting on seventy-eight thousand dollars per annum. This will this pay offer lifts them to eighty-five. Uh, sorry, eighty-seven. My apologies. I've just robbed them of two thousand. There, eighty-seven thousand uh, dollars, and that takes them um, up to the top of the graduate pay scales com- when compared to anywhere else in the country. And by lifting the graduate allowance uh, from sixteen hundred dollars to two thousand dollars, that certainly puts them well above. Uh, the next focus um, salary increment uh, level that you mentioned is level three principals who run very complex small schools. Uh, the demanding job of the level three principal is far different to when I did it uh, back in the late 19, 1999 to 2001 period. It's f- far different and far more complex and challenging now. So they will all now begin on level 3.3 and move through to level 4.2. Uh, which, so that is a significant incentive uh, when compared to uh, the people who are pos- sitting in the metropolitan area, for example, who are level three deputies and are thinking about the principal trail. There's now a financial incentive for them to look at those level three smaller school communities. 
Level five district high schools, uh, district high schools always used to be level five and six and over the last 10, 15 years that's been adjusted to reflect the number of students in the school. I would suggest that the level five district high school um, offer is probably one of the most um, attractive uh, employment opportunities within the offer in that, again, if you're looking to see whether or not you'd like to be a school leader, you can now go out to a wheat belt. Uh, there are 56 of them, I think, around the state uh, or anywhere else, district high school, with a smaller number of students, but you, you're on a significantly higher pay scale than what you will be in Perth as a uh, head of department or a program coordinator or a um, level three uh, deputy principal. So they become very attractive options. And in some people's cases, you would be earning an extra up to $30,000 more by the end of this um, offer if you took up one of those district high school positions. The senior teacher one, as I mentioned before, we have about 9,500 senior teachers within our system. Uh, these are people that we have we fought for in, in bargaining because these are the people we most need to retain in many ways. We've been losing our 2.8, 2.9 and senior teachers because of workload related matters. So what we have now is a salary increment. They are currently on $117,000 to qualify for what is now known as the new senior teacher two. Uh, most of these people, Bob, are already doing three and four additional responsibilities in, in their school. So this is both a workload impact and a salary um, offer within this. For those people who wish to continue to do the responsibilities or they want to reduce them down to two responsibilities, they will immediately jump from $117,000 to $125,000 and ultimately by the end of the um, term of this agreement they'll be at $134,000, which is a, a very significant um, salary inc increase compared to everybody else across the board. And I hope that that works for the 2.789 teacher who wishes to go on um, and to use their expertise in the school setting. They probably already are doing it quite informally with mentoring and counselling of new people to the school, whether they be graduates or not. Um, and as for the level three classroom teacher uh, pilot, this is only for 40 locations. This is about demonstrating to the system, including the department when I say that, that the 0 0.1, which comes with this level three classroom pilot, the 0 0.1 is critically important to the success of a school. Uh, back in uh, my principal's days at Middle Swan, I had six level three teachers. They all had 0.1 at that time. And for 0.1 of the, the week, they were helping with the phase planning, the curriculum, the instruction, mentoring new staff, lesson design and planning. All of that's been taken away. And all of that has become the responsibility of the principal and the deputy, which has ramped up their workload. So if we can demonstrate to the department through this pilot of 40 uh, level three classroom teachers who by the end of the agreement will be on $147,000, which is a very significant incentive, I hope, uh, that the point one works, it makes schools better, better outcomes for students because of the point one, then, then I'm sure that we'll have more to bargain with to get that point one back. There are 1,200 or thereabouts level three teachers in our system and we need to build a metric and a narrative to get that point one back. And uh, above all of that, all of those incentives and improvements and a recognition of the actual work that, that people like level three classroom teachers are doing, the recognition of senior teachers and, and the, the work of principals at various levels, there is a really significant change too in this offer, which sees a shift from locality allowances to district allowances for lots of regional teachers, not for all, but for, for a lot of people. Um, this is quite significant. This is a legacy matter from this offer. There are a number of wins in the third offer, which, which I would broadly describe as uh, legacy considerations for the membership. This is one of them. Locality allowances, as most people appreciate and share the point of view, have been stalled for some time. They're not worth a great deal of money and they've certainly fallen well behind cost of living. I can think of a small level three town right now where you earn $383 to, to live there. That will jump to $2,500 to be there per annum. That's a small example. If I were to go to a Kimberley or Pilbara example, I would be talking about a, an improved uh, district allowance from the locality of three and a half to four thousand dollars. So this is something that we get to build upon 
Uh, we have been informally asked by government to be part of the review for the district allowances, which will start towards the end of the year, which means we will go in there and make sure that those locations where the district allowance is currently not scheduled and applies is considered for and argue for their case as much as a town that's only 70 or, or whatever case down the road from them who's missing out. So the district allowance is very, very significant. It's also part of what people who are in uh, Perth who may be drawn to some of the other components of the offer, like uh, the right to return to your staffing position after three years if you go to a regional location or to a school leadership position if you wish to go out there for three years, you might be drawn to a location that's got a healthy district allowance on from their current locality allowance, making the financial package uh, so much more attractive whilst you're also developing other skills as a moment in time within your career. And uh, for those of you playing along at home, it's very difficult to keep track of those district allowances, but luckily um, we've done the work for you. So when you go to sstuwa.org.au, um, you'll see that pop-up window. It will lead you into the details of the agreement in principle. One of the info sheets you will find on there is each of the district allowances plus a comparison with what the locality allowances are that are currently paid. So you'll be able to see which area you're in, does it apply to you, how much is it? And as, as Matt said, there are some significant amounts. There is also, for those of you who are really nerdy about this sort of thing, you can find a 22 Act, 2010, sorry, 2010 Act under which these district allowances were first introduced and is also the 2019 Amendments, which will give you the new rates that were introduced in 2019 uh, on an annual basis. Now, those rates are already in our charts, but it just gives you that original info and gives you the chance to do your own research. So, as uh, Matt has suggested, in terms of salary and allowances, there is the uh, headline, which gives you an increase above the cost of living, albeit not a huge one, but an increase every year. Um, and then there are the district allowances and a number of individual areas uh, where teachers will be better off. Now, Matt, talking about that... Um, within the um, um, materials that we've put together, and I think this is a good time to do it, perhaps we could just highlight a couple of areas. And, and what you can uh, do as a member or a non-member now, you can kind of have a look online and you can see each, I think there's uh, seven in all scenarios that are laid out. Um, and Matt, you might just m maybe starting with the grad teacher um, give us a little idea of, of maybe a couple of those because people can go on and read them on their own, but maybe the um, the senior teacher, the grad teacher and the uh, regional principal might be good examples. Yeah, well, the graduate teacher uh, is in the third offer faced with a gross salary increase of uh, just over $10,000 or 12.73 uh, percent. Uh, the level three grad, level two point one, sorry, graduate teacher uh, currently would re would receive eighty eight thousand one hundred and seventy eight, and that uh, on top of that, with the two thousand dollars I mentioned before, two thousand dollars for the um, graduate allowance takes the total pay to ninety thousand dollars one hundred seventy eight. As a, as I, I think I mentioned before in, in a separate um, podcast, the the highest other grad allowance in the in the country at the moment is eighty five thousand dollars. So $90,000 to kick off and start your career from, that's, and that's before district allowances and any other CTPs or anything along those lines that you might be available to receive um, is included in your package. And I think off the top of my head, that puts them in the top two nationally now. It's not quite there. There's just one state, South Australia maybe, on the salary component alone which is ahead, but we're ahead of everybody else for graduate teachers. The graduate uh, teacher who's in a regional school uh, on, on level 2.2, they might be working in uh, Broome. They have a gross salary starting point of $90,000. Uh, that'll increase to one hundred and five, just short of $106,000 actually, uh, which is a 17.5% or 17.65% increase by the end of the agreement in December 2025. So uh, a significant uh, increase for, for those people who are in the Kimberley and the Pilbara. Um, it, you really do need to look upon what it is per location, but nonetheless, it is there. But I also recognise that there is also cost of living pressure there as well. Uh, for my mind, uh, the right of return for teachers is as attractive as, as, the, 
as the graduate allowances. So if you're someone who's in a metropolitan or southwest school and you, you wish to go to one of these locations, now's not a bad time to have a look at that. If you're a permanent person, you've got a right of return. You can come back to your school in three years' time under this offer. And uh, what about you getting towards the other end of the scale? So you, you, you've done your uh, initial hard work, you've, you've stayed with teaching and heavens, that's a, a commitment because it's been a very difficult time and, and we've lost a lot of teachers, but they've hung in there and they're, they're a senior teacher, significant benefits there with the new level? Uh, well, again, I, I would go as far to say any time you get a new salary increment and, and it is about retention as well as reducing workload, which this one is, then you've established a legacy matter that not only this group of senior teachers will benefit from, but also the next group of senior teachers will benefit from, and that's uh, those people in the 2.789 range. Uh, look, the, the public education system has forever run on in-kind support, and I can put my house on it that there are people who are in the 2.789 range who are helping other people out and qualifying for that senior teacher responsibility already. Uh, they simply need to get to uh, that, uh, meet the criteria of being eligible for senior teacher, and, and then the salary component of senior teacher one, and then the new part for senior teacher two kicks in. And it's not to be sneezed at. You would be looking at someone who is on a 2.9 at the moment, um, who by the end of the offer will be a potential, that's on $113,000, who if they qualified for senior teacher one, that will make them eligible for two, that would put the pay scale at $134,000 in just a few years' time. So that is a very significant increase. Uh, the 2.9 salary teacher on 113500 at the moment uh, over the course of a three-year deal, that would re then go to 127, or just almost 128 thousand dollars with this with this pay offer, which is uh, a gross increase of more than 14 thousand dollars. And uh, while we're talking about that, the the SSTUWA is is um, the union for all educators in public schools, and that means that that it's not just trying to hive off one section of the uh, teacher workforce and say, hey, look, we've got a great deal for you. Just leave everybody else behind. Uh, and very important with that, we, we've got a, a very significant um, and highly valued uh, principal membership. So if uh, one of those principal members is in a regional area, um, let's take a shot at Kalgoorlie because that happens to be the example we've put in the book. And it's not a real example, but it is a genuine example of where the action will... will so it's not an individual but it is the uh, level. Where will they be um, um, after this agreement, if this agreement gets voted in? Well, OK. <laughs> a level 5-3 teacher is currently on $163,000. Then they receive the locality allowance, which will be replaced by the district allowance. The district allowance goes from $432 to $2,354 for Kalgoorlie, which is an increase from locality to district of a staggering 445%, uh, such is the value of the district, district allowance uh, component of the offer. So by 2025, a level 5.3 principal will now be a level 5.4 principal, and they will be on $186,000 by, by the time of that agreement, which doesn't include the district allowance. That'll be on top of that. So that'll be closer to $188,000 from 5.3 to 5.4 by the life of this agreement in Kalgoorlie. Okay, and uh, you can find all of these uh, scenarios and, and a number more. I said there's seven in all, going from graduate teacher through to mid-career senior teacher, level three classroom teacher, deputy principal, um, and you can find all of those in the full info kit online. Um, and, of course, with full salary tables and charts and all of the allowance information, you can actually sit down and work out your own scenario as it suits you too, both now um, and wherever you might like to be in the future. So the salary and allowance uh, uh, situation is pretty comprehensive. We hope we've given you a lot of info on that uh, and that uh, a reminder you can find it all online and do your own checking if you need to. Just one final word, Bob. I really think people need to look at those salary tables to see where they are at now and they, where they will be at at the end of the life of this agreement, which is December 2025. Such is the long period of time that bargaining can take up within, within, uh, within the life of a new agreement. So by November uh, 
2025, we're going to start to need to talk about a new log of claims. That's please how please quickly, don't say that. <laughs> that's how quickly, I oh know, <laughs> but that's how quickly the turnaround is. Uh, so look at where you are now, look at where you will be and keep that in mind. Actually, just one thing we should probably mention too, that, that, that three-year agreement is, is quite important. Um, that's the government wanted the three years. Previously, these agreements have been for two. So it does give people a little bit more time to reap the benefits um, and just changes the timeline slightly, as you said, although it's so compressed because there's such a, a long gap, particularly in this set of negotiations, it all compresses down and within a year you're back negotiating again. That's right, and everybody gets a little bit of EBA fatigue, not just um, those people in the bargaining team, but people in schools, importantly, as well. The important point to make here, of course, is the relationship of the bargaining cycle to the electoral cycle. We know that in WA there will be a state government election held in March next year. So a three-year agreement, uh, we then look at the next uh, election cycle, which have actually been part of our planning all along and part of the executive's consideration. So we're quite aware of what the impact of a three and a two uh, agreement would have looked like, a two and a three-year agreement would look like. And I just want to reassure membership that all of that kind of forward thinking from 2000. 2025 to 2029 is already part of executives' consideration for hoping to get the best out of each of those deals for our membership and for public education. Western Teacher Live, cutting through noise on public education and union issues.